Hey everybody, today I'm going to give five tips on being a leader in school uh, based on my studies of thousands of successful leaders and hundreds of successful leaders through books. And uh, I'm doing this because a YouTuber, uh, YouTube comment asked me to. Uh, he says that he's starting school as a class leader and he's never made decisions like this before he doesn't know how to lead and he could very much benefit from some advice um, I think his teacher chose him as a class leader so let's get to it by the way I have a little uh, makeup on from Halloween still so these tips come from a variety of different leaders I've studied including Reed Hastings which is someone who founded Netflix I got this off his book no rules rules one of the most respected leaders of all time. And then there's a few other leaders who uh, were very successful in their organizations, uh, VPs of, uh, executive VPs of like Walt Disney and stuff. Names that you might not recognize, but were very successful like uh, Lee Cockerell. So let's get into it. Um, first tip, uh, I think really comes from Gary Vaynerchuk, but I think a lot of other leaders would agree. Um, a great leader isn't someone who puts themselves above others and says, ho, 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 I'm better than you, I have higher status, listen to my orders. No, that's what the bad leaders do. The good leaders are actually people who serve. They help clear obstacles away for their team so that their team can do the best job possible. They empower their team. They are there to, to move their team forward. And so you're really serving your team, not the other way around. And that's what makes a great leader. So, so keep that very much in mind. Uh, okay, the second one comes from the man, Reed Hastings. Um, and that is basically leaders should, you know, establish their credibility and essentially become respected and improve their skills. Uh, but then once you do that, uh, you should be transparent and honest about mistakes. Why? Because it builds trust, it encourages courage, and it promotes others to be vulnerable. Um, another great example of a great leader who was very open about his mistakes was Steve Ballmer of Microsoft. And... Uh, you know, the caveat there is you need to establish yourself and become respected before you just constantly talk about your mistakes. So the third tip comes from Lee Cockerell. Um, and this is something that was also echoed in uh, another book about management and leadership and uh, toughness uh, from a Navy SEAL, uh, two Navy SEALs, and that's extreme ownership. And that is to make sure that your team is very clear what they're responsible for and what they should do. Your instructions need to be simple, clear as day, and it may seem obvious, but a lot of organizations, a lot of managers don't necessarily have this. And so there's confusion, which leads to back and forth, which leads to sometimes fights and more confusion. So make it clear, make it clear to them what they need to do, what's expected of them, and who's responsible for every little thing. Okay, uh, jumping back to Reed Hastings, tip number four is, uh, as a leader, you should always make sure to um, make your team uh, something that you support, that you encourage, that uh, you don't micromanage, you don't overwork, uh, but you you help them out. It's about uh, being humane. It's about giving them reasonable time off, reasonable uh, encouragement, and part of that comes from being a good model. So with Netflix, the leaders take a lot of vacation because otherwise if they tell their team to 
take a lot of vacation, but the leader isn't, they found the team does not. So they often look at you uh, to get that permission because they'll, otherwise they'll be like, well, the leader's not taking time off. They may just be testing me. I, I can't take time off even though they're telling me I, I should. So um, yeah, you'll find Netflix has a very good vacation culture, which is fantastic. And the leaders will oftentimes shout from the rooftops how much vacation they're taking because part of that is necessary as, as a cultural thing to show that it's okay for their teammates. Um, so that's another big part of it. Now, the fifth tip <clears throat> goes back to kind of Lee Cockerell, but I think a lot of other uh, successful people have talked about this uh, as well. And uh, I think it comes down to leadership is about being open to uh, being humane. Um, <coughs> Lee Cockerell, Richard Branson, they talk about respect, appreciation, uh, listening, active listening, not being the center of attention and talking a lot, but listening to others, uh, hearing what they have to say, uh, paying attention to them, respecting them, appreciating them, showing warmth, empathy, inclusion, and acknowledgement. Um, sounds obvious, simple, but you know, there's so many companies, organizations where the management doesn't treat the team with respect. They just treat them as lowly workers. There's no respect, there's no appreciation, there's no dignity sometimes. And because people are human, they don't like that. This diminishes morale and it just leads to a poor situation. So to create that positive company culture, um, you don't need to uh, micromanage. You can delegate, uh, but make it clear what everyone has to do. Uh, move on from your mistakes. Admit your mistakes once you've built credibility and learn from them. And uh, learn, treat them as humans. Res show respect, appreciation, kindness, uh, and listen to them. Uh, Richard Branson says that he's actually surprisingly silent in meetings because most of the time he's listening to his team talk. So thanks for watching. I'll see you later.